Hi everyone, Joe Garth here, creator of Brushifier.io. Everything you just saw was rendered in real time using Unreal Engine 4.25 and the latest version of Brushify. As some of you might know, the concept of Brushify is to create an environment infrastructure for artists and designers so that they can rapidly create environments in Unreal Engine 4. In this video, I'm gonna be showing what Brushify has become over the last couple of years of development. And I'm also gonna be showcasing some of the new features that are available right now in the 2020 version. I'm also gonna be teasing a few of the plans that I've got for the future. But before we do all that, let's have a look at some of the great work that people have been doing with Brushify in this past year. As you might know, users can download Brushify and customize it for their own projects. That could mean simply grabbing one of the example landscapes and using that for a cinematic or even a game. Or it could be going further and building your own environment completely from scratch. For me, it's been absolutely incredible to see artists grabbing these tools and using them to speed up their workflows. I think when you don't have to focus on that initial technical setup, you're free to be more creative and put more time into the art itself. I think one of the hardest things when creating something is actually communicating the overall concept. And I think it's really cool to see that people really get it. They're using the sculpting brushes, the auto material and the assets, and they're creating worlds really, really quickly. It definitely took a bit of time, but people are now understanding the idea that you can merge all of these different packs into a single project and then use them to create new worlds of your own. Brushify can also be combined with other marketplace products, such as Hemisphere Skies, which I've actually been using periodically throughout this video to create some really nice looking renders. And the great thing with all of this is that it provides a really good starting point for serious developers. And that's because the things like shaders are designed to be completely customizable and modular. So developers just go into Brushify, they take a look at it, and they take the parts that they need and use them to build their own games. There's also my ongoing tutorial series, Brushify Bootcamp. These tutorials let you see exactly how Brushify is set up under the hood and helps developers make the sort of general customizations that are most commonly needed. So that's things like adding new paint layers to the auto material or sculpting the landscape with alpha brushes or importing assets from libraries like Megascans and using them with the system. Pretty much all of this has been possible due to the power and the flexibility of both the Unreal Engine and the Marketplace ecosystem. And I was also really lucky to receive an epic mega grant, which helped me spend even more time on the project. This year, I've received thousands of emails through the contact box on Brushify.io. I've really tried my best to read through and see if there are ways that I can improve my product and fix the most common bugs and issues. I've also been listening to feature requests and weighing up the pros and the cons of the implementation of new features, whether they're necessary, costly for performance, or have usability drawbacks. In the end, I only implement features when I believe they are artistically and technically beneficial and are rock solid. Now that you've got a good idea of the story so far, I'm going to talk you through some of the improvements I've been making. I'm also going to show you exactly how you can use these new features with your projects. One feature that's long been in demand is triplanar mapping. This feature reduces stretching on any completely vertical slopes that you sculpt onto the landscape. I tried to implement a version that has a good balance between visual fidelity and performance. The feature does increase overdraw a little, but of course it can be easily enabled and disabled via a tick box in the Brushify landscape material properties. As this is quite a performance intensive feature, it is disabled by default, so if you want to use it, just enable it via the tick box. Another new improvement of this revision is the reduced tiling feature. One of the major problems that people face when making maps is hiding tiling in the distant landscape. In the past, I've usually recommended manually painting a second layer to sort of cover up the tiling. While this works well in most cases, it's only a manual solution. So for revision three, I added a way to hide the repetitive tiling directly in the shader. This does cost a little bit of overdraw though. So if you don't require it, of course, you can easily disable it in the options. Something else I've been working on is improving the default procedural distributions in Brushify. Sometimes in older Brushify versions, rocks could look a little bit repetitive and didn't really blend well with the terrain in some cases. I've now modified the distribution settings as well as the procedural geometry to improve the overall look and embed the geometry a little bit better into the landscape. Small visual tweaks like this really help creators that are using Brushify out of the box. 
The goal has always been to make everything look as good as possible in as many situations as possible without the need for manual tweaks. As you might have noticed, I'm continually adding and improving new Brushify assets. So if you already own a pack, you may have already received some of these new and improved assets completely for free. The first is the Brushify Cliffs pack, where I've added two new high resolution cliff pieces, which the player can run and jump around on. And of course, these pieces are completely modular, so they're perfect for slotting into the landscape to add detail to slopes and give your levels some ledges. For all the Brushify packs, the default grass mesh has been completely redone, and I've tried to create more realism while still maintaining a high level of performance. I also really wanted to make sure that you guys have access to the Blender source files for all these crucial landscape assets. That way, everyone can see exactly how the assets are created and modify them for their own needs. Right now, all of the grass, the little rocks, and the pebbles that you can see in the Brushify Environment Shaders pack come with little source.zip files that contain the .blend file, and you can extract that and just modify and re-import the asset if needed. A lot of people have commented that they really like the look of the Natural Roads example level, and I think it's a great look that's really realistic, but still generic enough to fit with a lot of projects. So for Revision 3, I've included in the Environment Shaders pack a new level called the Starter level. Now this is a really basic scene that's completely blank, but it has a very similar lighting setup to the Natural Roads pack. It's a sort of default overcast lighting. The purpose of this level is to become the starting point for your landscape creations. Instead of having to set up a level and lighting from scratch, or remove a bunch of assets from one of my example levels, you can simply fire up the starter level and start sculpting and adding assets. With Unreal Engine 5 and the next generation consoles on the horizon, the pressure is really on for creators to make sure that assets reach the highest quality levels. Going forward, I'm going to be doing everything that I can to make sure the Brushify system is fully compatible as we transfer over to UE5 and the next generation consoles. The source assets that are used to create Brushify are far more resolution than what's currently in the engine. So once systems like Nanite become available, I should be able to use those systems to increase the quality even further. All right, guys, I think that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you want to learn more about Brushify, you can visit www.brushify.io and that will give you more information about the product and will also link you to the Unreal Engine marketplace where you can purchase the packs and add them to your project. If you're interested in learning how to create environments with Unreal Engine and with Brushify, then take a look at the rest of my YouTube channel uh, by clicking on my name below. And uh, you can also go to www.brushify.io forward slash bootcamp if you want to check out my Brushify bootcamp series, which I discussed earlier. Uh, and of course, subscribe to the channel and then you'll get notified whenever I put out some new content. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else. I think that pretty much covers everything. Obviously, this is a huge milestone for me and I could never have got here without the support from the community. And uh, I would like to thank you guys so much uh, from the bottom of my heart for buying my products, uh, for being involved, for posting comments, all that great stuff, and uh, some of the awesome reviews that I've received on Unreal Marketplace. Uh, they really mean a lot to me. And uh, yeah, big thanks. Cheers, guys. So yeah, I think that just about does it. And uh, catch you guys later. Cheers.